So today we have another very special guest joining us. We have June Lim. She is a she's a parent, but also a very high up leader. So she's been recruiting and managing big teams within large corporate companies. So today we wanted to have June on to talk about the nuances about her experience um, being an employee. Um, and how to wear that commercial hat, but also show up with empathy and support when her team needs it, um, especially around parents. Mm. And June, um, we were very excited to have June say yes to come on to our podcast because I, um, like I said to you earlier, June, I think you bring a really unique perspective, unique in the sense that where you find yourself at the moment, it's probably not as unique in the market because there's a lot of people that find themselves at different stages in their career. But as Taylor said, you're um, when it comes to building teams and managing teams and being a leader of teams within large corporates, uh, been there, done that. And what makes it really special is the way that I got introduced to June was actually as a referral from someone that was in her team. And the underlying message about that is, I have an amazing manager and you need to meet her. So without you prompting anything, that connection ha happened to me via somebody that worked in your team. So that just says everything to me about who you are as a, as a manager, a leader, um, and a person. That just sums it all up. So we wanted to get June on to talk about when you employ people as an employer and you're building your team, what are the things that you look for in an employee, bearing in mind that they're going to be part of your team, but ultimately Ooh. the team has a goal and that goal is a commercial goal. So you have to wear a few hats when you employ somebody you interview somebody and then make the decision to go, okay, you're part of my team and the package deal that you then employ. Um, and I, I said to June on Monday when we had a quick chat, we don't want to know the secret sauce and all your magic tricks that you use. You don't have to disclose any of those. But I think there's some universal truths in, in what leaders with successful and high-performing teams do. And we wanted to tap into that with you. So welcome and thank you for, um, yeah. for giving us your time. Awesome. Thanks, Suki. Thanks, Taylor. Wow, that was a very big introduction. I feel like I've got a hat on here. Um, thank you. I have worked in a number of organizations myself. Um, I think for me, I just want to note that I'm actually, you know, when people say they're a real people leader, you, I, I actually mean it. I actually care for my guys. I actually have a very clear, genuine concern for each and every one of them. Um, it could be male, female, different different countries they came from, wherever they're based, whether it's Australia or off, offshore. They're all very unique and individual, and I like to stress the fact that they're all very different with different skill sets. So when I go into an interview room, um, I look at the role I'm actually recruiting for, and I have my tech leads, my tech leads or my experts next to me that to ask the very technical questions to them. But I'm there watching and literally looking at making sure that I've got the right people with the right energy to join the team. Mm. Cultural fit is huge for me. Um, it just needs to feel right. I think you call it gut feel as well. You can you you can sense it when they mean what they say, um, yeah. and when they're asking yeah. those technical questions, I'm literally sitting on the site watching how they answer those technical questions. Um, if they panic, you can tell that they're probably just trying to think of something out very quickly, or if they're very comfortable. You can it, you you can sense it. So then I do go into it and I find out more information as to what's happening, what have they done, what sort of skills have they used to to apply that. Um, yeah. But it's all about asking the right yeah. questions to understand whether they've got the right skills, but also the right cultural fit. Like, are they arrogant? How do they work under pressure? Questions like these. Yeah. Do you like to yeah. left on your own to get out yourself, or do you have a certain time frame where you go, I can I can try this out for the next ten or fifteen minutes. It's not working. I'm going to seek help. 
because that's fine. Yeah. It's okay to ask for help because it's new. You don't necessarily have to do everything and know everything yeah. at the time about your approach yeah. and how you know a situation that's difficult for you. Um, and I've always started the, the interview with, this is an interview for you, but actually it's not really an interview. It's just us trying to catch up and understand whether you're a good fit for us and you trying to understand it works for you. It, it needs to work. Um, so it needs to be both parties trying to make sure that they get the right synergy, the right understanding of each other's roles and responsibilities and always make, make a point to say, I'm very open to them sharing things with me where possible so that I can understand and help them along the way should they be in my team down the track. So yeah. it's a very trust basis. Um, a lot of, yeah, so basically it's all about the right fit, the right experience and the little nuances that you that you tap into when you're bigger. asking questions along. Yeah, but it, it gets yeah. bigger when you when you go and dwell and delve into the actual interview itself. Yeah. Yes. And um, I think there's two things that I picked up from what you've just said. Um, one being trust, and that's that's something that gets built over time. And I think trust is when, like you say, when you sit back in an interview and you get the tech lead to ask those real technical questions, but you're sitting on the side watching and listening, and yes, sometimes the answer that comes up, but the body language might say two different things, um, and then delving into that. And that's where trust gets built already in that first few moments. Um, and I think that's the thing that you're able to do really well, June, is when you build that culture, trust is involved in that. And that's why I think you're able to walk into somebody's life and get them to share a little bit more because they're not being judged. It's yeah. really you wanting to help. And to understand. understand. Yes. Yeah. And I loved when we had the conversation on Monday as well, June, you spoke about not like you're not wanting to know about their kids or their situation or if they're wanting to be remote just because you're wanting to know so then you can provide right. that support so you've got that context around okay well i need to understand why so then i can build my approach around that as well which i think is quite special in yeah. the way that um that happens yes and again that does it come back around to trust as well correct and, yes. and trust takes time, right? You don't you don't expect to join a team which you lead and go in and go, I'm really trustworthy, I'm an amazing leader, come talk to me. It's not that. It's all these small interactions you have with them. When you're having a one-on-one, -on -one, you commit to the one-on-one. -on -one. If you can't make that one-on-one, -on -one, you let them know you can't make it due to X, Y, Z reasons, and you reschedule it. You don't delete, you don't cancel, you reschedule it because you, you take every interaction you have with them as important as it is for you as it is for them. So Correct. you value their time. I value my time, but they also understand. So my guys, when I can't make a, a meeting for that week or one-on-ones, because they know I'm under the pump with lots of meetings and stuff, I typically would write an actual message to the Slack channel for the whole team. And I say, hey guys, I'm at the moment, this week has just been a write-off. I've got been I've been calling to many meetings for an urgent project. I need to be in these meetings. I have rescheduled your one-on-ones to next week or the next day or whatsoever. Um, but if you've got something that you really need to speak to me, it's urgent, um, please let me know individually, come and talk to me and I'll make time for you. Okay, it might yeah. be after work, it might be a bit later, or it might be a lunch time where we will have our lunch and we can chat about it. It is fine, but just let me know. And yeah. most of the times the guys know that I don't cancel one-on-ones, I make it happen. So when I have to cancel or reschedule actually, they know that it's for a right reason. So they're yeah. very understanding. They go, look, no, we can chat to you tomorrow or the day after or the week. Yeah. So it's about making sure that you have the interaction. And when they are calling out issues, they're sharing with you the problems they have at work for you to unblock. Don't don't take it as a grain of salt. Write it down and see how you can help and go, right, I know, I know who can help you with this. Let me go and speak to that person to alleviate yeah. it and unblock it. Because that's when you're acting on it. To talk to someone and then to see it not go to fruition, that's very annoying. We've all been through that yeah. where we've got managers mm -hmm. who attend and don't fix the problem, right? You don't even have to fix. Attending to it means talking to somebody about it, finding a solution or finding a, an option 
to, to work on it next time. It's all about listening and acting on it. If you don't act on it, it goes on void on on deaf ears. Nobody listens to you, and they don't want to talk to you afterwards. What's the point? So it's about acting. And all the feedback I've got from my guys is, you always come back with a, a with a response as to what I've said the other day. Thank you for doing this, or it's now tracking really well because of X Y Z. Because you've got to listen and you've got to pick pick it up and just get onto it because that they're telling you that you need they need you when they need you. You've yeah. got to come into the party. And that's it. Correct, and that's building. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's building those small little bo blocks of trust. So when yeah. we circle that back to a parent that has a child that's not well or that has a parent, so we're not all parents, but we're all children and we might have parents. Yeah. So you have to attend to a family member. Mm -hmm. I think by building that trust and understanding, again, like Taylor said, you don't have to know the ins and outs of everything. But having built that trust and understanding the scenario, somebody can come to you and say, June, just had this issue happen. Like a lot of us have family overseas. I have families yeah. overseas. My parents are there. If my if there's something wrong and I've got to go, sorry, I've got, got to go. go. Got to go. Got to go. Yep. So, but not all environments make you feel comfortable to have the conversation. You almost feel guilty. Yep. and having that conversation mm -hmm. um and that's the i think that's the tricky part because when i used to work for companies they didn't ask me is your parent are they are your parents in australia or are they in south africa and if they get sick what are you going to do like that was never discussed that wasn't part of the interview which it shouldn't be but it's part of who i am so when you're employing somebody and you have that environment how did you deal with that um when you had tricky situations because you've got to be you've got to it's not black and white mm -hmm. it's gray. yeah you you've got you've got to just put on the, the hat of the other person's shoes you're literally stepping into their shoes right you need to understand that if mom and dad is sick you have to go you have to go home but what i'm seeking for is enough notice where possible sometimes you don't have notice it's tomorrow i've got to fly out it's the trust, because if you build that trust, you know that when they come to you, it is bad. It is bad. You, you don't yes. you don't second guess it. Second guess it. You go, yep. How can I support you? What do we have on right now? What are you working on? How can I take that off you and give it to somebody else? Can you provide me with a handover to somebody right now so that you can get get hacking and and head off overseas to your mom or dad? You know, and because they they know that you are supporting them, they'll do everything they can not to not to yeah. not to mess it up. So they will absolutely make sure that they provide the proper handover because you're helping them. They will help you make it as smooth as possible as well. So yeah. it's a, it's a two way thing, right? Like it's all about um, the communication, right? Your comms that every interaction you have with them is so important. It could be a negative feedback, but providing a, a constructive feedback is so much better than just yeah. running with, this is not what you're well with. So the fact that yeah. you can build a trust based on, them telling you that this has really happened. I really need to go. Go. You need to go. You have to go. Book your flights right now. When is your flight? Okay. Let's work on this. Can we get X, Y, Z to come and get the handover from you? Are you available at this time? It will take half an hour. Get yeah. your notes ready and off and, and download yeah. it. That's what happened to me. Somebody that had to head off because his wife's um, grandmother is not well, they had to fly out. Um, we gave them the option of going, yep, get what, what's left on this project, give us the information, and off you go. And don't think about work, just go off for that one week and help support her, support the kids. It's going to be hard, but go from there. But it's the understanding and expecting that people understand that you that you understand the situation as well. Yeah. I think communication yeah. is very, very important. And then when that happens, you communicate to the rest of the team. You let them know, yeah, not enough know. information, you don't have to say, just say, so and so has to leave very urgently overseas back home. They're going to be away for a week. This is what's happening, but we have a plan of attack. This is the plan of attack. We've got XYZ covering for this person in the meantime. So everyone working on that project is not going to be stressed that this person's leaving. It's just all handled properly. So you've got an end to end managing the staff who's impacted, managing the project that's impacted, giving steps to ensure that it's all covered and it's still fine. So yeah. It's 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 just people one on one for me. It's just making sure that yeah. you 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 encompass that care and consent and empathy. Like stuff happens. Kids fall sick. Yeah. 
life yep. fall at daycare yep. they're not well they're going to be picked up from daycare go send me yes. a text if you can't get me because i'm stuck in meetings but please go don't wait for me to approve it i trust you yep. to make the right call you go and come back and we can talk about it do you want to work time do you want to work extra time this afternoon or this morning yep. later um or tomorrow yep. morning whatever works let us know how we can help and how we can support and the team helps. it's such an amazing thing sorry i was just gonna say it's such an amazing thing to have someone say to you don't wait i trust you mm. yeah that's huge yeah that's huge and june you've hit it on the head where you um where you said when you create that environment of trust it's not just from you trusting them the employees and your team it's them trusting you as well and that they will do the right thing by you because if they don't that trust is broken um which is so rare it's 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 in I, i've seen it happen in organizations and i've seen it go really really well and i've seen it gone really really bad as well um i want to ask you when it doesn't work when you have an employee that went through the process or maybe you inherited a team which sometimes you don't have the um the luxury of building your own team so you've inherited a team and it's just not right how do you handle maybe a situation where there's somebody that you go okay you're pushing the limits now how do you handle that i've always from day dot when i introduce myself to the team i've always explain to them that I'm a very honest and a very transparent manager. You will never receive a bad feedback from me at your performance review. You will always receive ongoing and on the spot where possible feedback, where you're allowed to explain yourself, fix Sorry. it, or talk to me yes. and talk it out. So yes. Yes. for me, it's all about the, the, the instant where possible feedback. I've had to give quite honest, not very nice feedback to people because they need to hear it from my point yes. of view as to what they've done to make the matter worse or better, right? So for me, it's all about talking in a respectful manner. Um, don't don't need to yell, don't need to shout. Just talk about yeah. it and and just and, and and tell them this is actually really important, important for me, but important for them as well for their career. You know the way they speak to people, how they're addressing this situation. Um, we don't we don't ever throw anyone in the team under the bus never you never ever yeah. say x y z this, this that's why we had to roll back the work no we talk about the fact that tell me what the problem is i will then communicate upwards that the team has done x y z we are rolling back to work this is what we're going to be doing moving forward this is what we've done taking steps to make sure that this does not happen again you never, never hear again. bad news the name linked to it because it's stressful to be in that sort of environment where it's a dog yeah. eat dog walk. I don't, I don't work like yeah. that in the team. So the, 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 it's so important to them provide the feedback for them to fix and work on it, right? So for me, it's all about ensuring that when you have that feedback, you also open up the idea of them speaking back and telling you their point of view because there's always two yeah. sides to the story. Two sides, sides. Okay? or three. Oh, three. Actually, it's a lot of sides, right? You want to understand it. And if you disagree, you also need to disagree amicably, okay? There's ways to do it, so you don't just go, well, it's my way or the highway. You, you cannot do that. You yeah. have to make sure that there is a reason, there's a protocol as to why we're doing it this way. Why are you expected to act the way you, you why you shouldn't be acting the way you are and provide feedback and then give them steps on how they can do better. And yeah, be reasonable. Yeah. Getting a feedback and giving people time to change, not expecting the change happen within the day or the next week. People yes. take yeah. time. So, monitor you say to them let's check in again in a, in, a, in a week's time or two weeks time on how you're going how are you feeling after this talk to me about this right and don't just shut it down you got to be open and go that feedback the other day how are you feeling now and they can tell you and you go from there and they still don't come to the party then you really have to try and coach and train and get your leads on board um it can get quite difficult guys managing yeah. people because yeah but you also need to understand what's happening at home Sometimes yeah. it's what's happening Correct. that's getting them so uptight and so frustrated and all of that. So it's it's not just the one thing. It could be work, it could be family, it could be kids, it could be mom, dad, wife, you don't know. So 
when you get that trust and people start talking to you, it's much easier to then find a way to help. It's all about coaching and mentoring and making sure that they come they come from a good place and the feedback is coming yeah. from a good place. I'm not here to give you feedback for the sake of it. Like it's not fun giving yeah. not very nice. We all know good that. But it's about constructive. Yeah, about constructive correct. feedback. Take, problem, take what you've observed, ask them if they agree with it, and then work on steps to try and make it better. Mm. And have that trust and if you, that correct. Be better. And the trust is the underlying thing, and that's that's so difficult to create. But once you have it, it's the most valuable thing within a team to have. And you you hit the nail on the head. And we keep speaking about employing a package. Mm -hmm. You don't employ just Suki. You employ Suki, the mum, the daughter, the wife. It's a package deal, and there's so many facets to your life, and work is one of them, and it's a big facet yep. that you have to um, to bring who you are, but also the package deal to. Um, in terms of you then, like, of course, you manage your team, you build that cultural um, trust within your team, but above that level, June, you are also part of an exec team. So you're also a barrier sometimes to protect your team and to make sure that they can operate within this environment that you've created. But as a person or employee, you're also part of a, a team above that. So that makes it tricky because you're also balancing what's happening above, what's happening below, what's coming in from the side, what the other pressures are. Um, it's a very, very dynamic environment, and to get it right mm. is yeah. pretty unique. It, it's it's about you know managing your team is one it's one dynamic right, but then managing your upwards is another kettle of fish. Literally, you you really need to form that trust again. So managing my team creates trust but i also need to be able to form that trust relate that trusting relationship with my manager and his manager above right so yes. when when june comes to you to say there is actually a problem with my team you know we have facing flight risk or we're just not getting the work that we need to get done because there's all these scope coming in and all the bits and pieces your your manager needs to my manager needs to understand that this is actually really real and step in and come to the party to help so you've got to find the right synergy upwards as well to make sure that you actually are reporting to the right person to help you with your career and make sure that yes when you call it's not going well that they understand why it's not going well and you're not just overreacting if that makes sense yeah. um yeah. my job is to i've got the right people that i've employed or have brought into the team to do the best that they can do and, and the best they can be so when it's not going as well and nobody likes a, a a picture that's not very pretty but that's life right that's life in it so you've got to make reality so you've got to make sure that you provide the information as much as possible with the context and i don't think people like excuses so we don't go excuses we just explain the situation and have steps as to why we're doing it this way and mitigate it if that makes sense so tell them the problem give them the solution give them options and we move on we don't dwell and go on and on about it because they're all very busy, guys above me and mm. myself as well included. And Mike is also busy. So it's just about yeah. ensuring that we we keep the lines of trust upwards. And it's all about celebrating the guys, the team's achievement as well. So, yeah, yeah so it's yeah. all about providing the feedback, sharing the achievements, and giving my guys the right credit that they should deserve. So yeah. um, talking about throwing out the bus, you never throw any team member in the bus when things are really bad. But when things are going really, really well, I will sing praises and I'll throw out names to my mm. to my managers and to my GMs. So that they know that X that in my team is doing amazing jobs. So yeah. it's and they trust you and people like that, right? They're, you're getting you're not claiming the credit. You're actually sharing the credit and giving them the credit mm. and letting them shine. That's that's what good managers do. You don't yeah. take. I've seen that it's not before, a me. and it's just an awful feeling. You do so hard. Yeah. You work so hard and. The credit no you work so hard you claim that credit i'll, I'll credit. give you that credit Talk about you it will come out in my mm -hmm. showcases it will come out in my iteration reports that i send out um on a week on a fortnightly basis i'll talk about it i'll talk to people i'll mention it did you hear about so and so so it's about 
about that that sharing piece where you actually give them what they deserve as well and they love that yeah 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 and coming like as a a candidate that is so empowering to them as well to be able to trust a leader that is going to praise them and like when they do the right things but they'll also want to keep doing the right right and get better because they know that at every single step of the way they're going to get that support and they're not going to be taken down or if something is wrong they're not going to feel bad about it it's you're coming from a good place you're there to set these people up for success, not Mm. for failure. And Mm. yeah, it's just, it, it would be so empowering. Like coming from like me with Suki as my leader, it is so empowering because I know that everything is constructive and she's only there to get me to the best version of me rather than, you know, putting me down or anything like that. And I want to show up for Suki and I want to do the best and I want to do even more than that because I know that she will like empower me to do it so it yeah and but again that empowerment comes down to trust and being able to trust your leader and having the right culture as well to be able to strive yes to be better Mm -hmm. June I wanted to ask you um in terms of looking at it from a an employer perspective but as an employee coming into a team. Because not mm-hmm. when you join an organisation, yes, the interview process, and if there's a recruiter involved, you can get some background detail. You go meet the people. You get a gut feeling for the organisation. But you don't always know. What advice would you give to someone that goes into an organisation, they join a team, and it's just not gelling? What would you say? What would your advice be? My advice would be, um, have you actually gotten to know them for a start? Have you been introduced to them formally? Um, Has the team come in to actually say hello to you in person? Have have we all organised like a meet and greet and lunch catch up or a coffee catch up? Um, Do you know what drives them? Like, I think for any new employees, I will typically let my team know that so-and-so is joining the team next week, um, give a bit of background about them, and I will highly encourage my team to come in on the Monday or the Tuesday or the Wednesday to come up for lunch. Um, I will organise the lunch myself and make sure that everyone tries to get there for lunch. Um, Things happen, right? Kids, stuff. So you, you don't you encourage right you think it would be really nice to get them to know get them to meet you in in the flesh you get to know each other um tester this is a new tester so you guys want to probably do your training side by side shadowing each other you know turning on your cameras where possible in meetings so that people know what each other looks like i i typically run a little joke i go it's wednesday camera on day and I go, oh, you've got your camera on oh today you've got a new top on oh you you shaved <laughs> your hair <laughs> <laughs> know that I'm actually watching what's happening. Yes. Um, yeah. That I am watching. I'm not just turning on the camera for the sake of it. And that I go, oh, I remember what you look like now, you know, because people yeah, change. Yeah. And those guys are in India. I don't even see them at all, right? So the cameras are fine. And people are not shy, actually. People say technology guys don't like their cameras on. Depends. I turn it on every day. So my face is on. I always get my face ready so that. Any meetings I go into, I turn it on because I want people to know that I exist and I'm there. So it, it's the presence, right? So for me, the advice is you've got to understand who you're working with. You've got yeah. to understand and really understand what, what drives them. That's why, that's how I manage my guys. Um, it could be they're just here for work and they've got kids to deal with. So at the end of the day, they just want to finish their work and go back and man- manage the kids and the husband. That's fine. But you've got mm-hmm. others who are actually very yeah. driven by their careers. They want to go X, Y, Z. They want to do that. Then you work on a development plan. You work on succession planning to ensure that they are looked after. And you, you, and you, and you coach them through it or along the way. You give them the opportunities because you know they want to do something. You hear of opportunities from your manager. You go, actually, so-and-so has said this. I'm going to put his name yeah. after that. And you go from there. So your job is to make them the best version of them, if that makes sense. So um, 
if it's not working well, then let me know how I can help because I can gel people in. I can bring people in to meet with you. Um, or I can connect you with somebody else that you're just not getting any traction with. You've tried to meet with them and just always so busy. Well, guess what? I'm going to come in and just go, mate, she's new, help her out. Yeah. Let's have a chat. Yeah. So it's all about yeah. getting the right connections and the right people to help and make you feel part of a team. But I make it a point that week is when I'm actually in the office because we don't normally go in the office um, five days a week. It's like maybe two or three days. So that week, obviously, on the Monday when they typically start, I'm there. I welcome them in. Um, get the laptops. Get set up with IT, and I take them out for a coffee. Right. So that yeah. that's the set that I'm talking to them, working them. And then I introduce the team to them. So it's you got. It's not so easy when you're new and you're being onboarded that you just get that cold yeah. treatment. It's very. Um, I don't like that. So I make sure there's a warm transfer, a warm, a warm yeah. welcome. Come on in, you know. And then we talk about. And then when we have a team meeting that day or, or a retro or a, a stand-up, we bring them up. We say, look at this. She's new. She's here. Talk, tell us about yourself. So it's that whole yeah. wholesome, well, you're part of a team. You're here. Yeah. Welcome. We really need you. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's make it work. And yeah. June, you've been in your positions pre-COVID, post-COVID. You've managed teams before that, during that, after that how in terms of and this is maybe stepping away a little bit from the parenting side but just managing teams and i know for myself i love working from home and i can manage it i do really well taylor is exceptional in working from home not all people are mm -hmm. um how do you manage that dynamic when you have kids at home life happening it's holidays next week is holiday for Queensland schools how how does that dynamic play into at the end of the day we have to make money there has to be a bottom line because if we don't do that then we don't have jobs yeah oh easy like um 2020 20, 20, oh that was terrible i i remember being sent home that afternoon and i had to send my team home and i said oh this is gonna take three weeks it's and then three weeks yeah, left we'll be, three we'll be back soon and then it just kept going, right? And I was struggling because I love the dynamics. I love being around people. So I myself was struggling. So I actually created a like a quiz, almost like a photo quiz. I got everyone to send me photos of anything. Shoes, books, plans, food you cook, food you buy, coffee that you make, anything. And I made it a, a daily game for, for my guys at the time. Like we got to know each other's interests. Love that. Yeah. That quiz, you cannot believe. I had a dashboard. I had names of, the, of my team members, points attached to it. It could be a question about my coffee cup here. And I go, um, oh, hang on, you see? Um, <laughs> who, who, who shared this photo? What's in it? Um, and tell me, is it a morning, morning cuppa or an afternoon cuppa? And then they start guessing and then the person that shared the photo will basically disclose their photo and talk about it we had people who could plan plans and plans would never die i had people like myself who would kill plans so i would take photos of them because they just don't live so i'm looking at taylor's plant there real looking really really good <laughs> a little bit something somebody loves gardening somebody just doesn't love gardening they don't have a green thumb all of that so we learn so much and somebody loves reading, they will take photos of the books that they're reading and talk about it. So we got to know each other so well during COVID that we didn't feel like we were away from each other. We actually away got to know from, each other yeah. more. more. So that's one way. Um, I used to have a lot of video calls in during the COVID time so that we remember what each other looked like. I call it remember right. what each other looked like. My son would come and say hello because he was at home with me. My other colleague would, would son would come and say hello and all over the call. It is fine. You understand? We're all working from home. We're all house homeschooling at the time. That was awful. I hated yeah. it. Yeah, that was um, awful. New respect for teachers. Mm. <laughs> I had a Trello board between my between my son and my myself. I go, what do you want to do today? We'll put that on the board and we'll commit and we'll get it done so that we can get it to the to the done column. So yes. he loved it and. Remember my my, my my husband, a Trello board? Why? I said, I just need him to have a, it's school. It's still school here. Yes. It's just yeah. mommy and daddy school. Yes. It's happening. You can do your yoga, yeah. you can do your maths, you can do your English, but we've got to get it done. So 
um, it's just understanding it. So I had I had I had my staff that just had team mem that little team members come and join us in our meeting. It is fine, mm. unless yeah. it's secret. It's um, obviously if you're if I'm meeting with my big GM and stuff, that's when I go. You need to go to that corner, stand over there, <laughs> don't make a noise. <laughs> But iPad comes in very handy. Go into that corner. Do not come near mummy. And mummy's got a very important <laughs> meeting, right? Yeah. That's life. Um, but I think it's the management of that. And then after COVID, mm -hmm. it's trying to get everyone back into the office. Now, that's hard. That's yeah. really, really hard. Yeah. Um, you, you, you might have team members to actually enjoy that. And you have team members that don't actually enjoy it. So mm -hmm. what I did was I created a Slack channel again that told everyone what well, the days that people are coming in. And people like to come in with this people, people that they know, the friends yes. that they know. So yeah. I want my guys typically in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Can you know if, if you guys want to see me or meet with your other colleagues and have lunch? Let's do that. And I try and organize lunch. So then okay. next people come into the office direction. Yeah. So yeah. it is you've got to get work going, right? So you've got to work around things to make it happen. Kids or no mm. kids, they're gonna be like if he's here right now, my little man, he'll come and say hello, and you were like, "Oh yeah. my god!" But it's what it is. But um, not because it's life, and he's yeah. part of your package deal. And that's yeah. that's the reason. I actually think it makes you more human to yeah. the viewer. Going, oh, uh, when you hear, "Oh, she's a mum, she's a mum," you hear it, but it's not actually reality until he pitches up on the screen. You're like, "Oh yeah, he, it's a mum. She's a mum, or yeah. he's a dad." Like that's. Yeah, and, and I'm did, very I... open. I'm very, I'm very open. I'll go, you know, got to clock off right now for an hour to go and see him swim at the, the school. Um, I'll let you guys know how he go later, so they know he exists. Yeah. They know he can swim. And then yes. when they're when when they when my team members are saying I've got to clock off now, it's Mother's Day. I said, Oh, have a great Mother's Day at daycare. Send us some photos. So it's all about really being part of a family, almost yeah. like share with yeah. us how it was. You know, the first Easter hat bunny parade thing amazing go have fun with that and let us know so it's trust you trust that they will yeah. log yeah. off and, and but mm -hmm. you also trust that they will come back and get that work done yeah don't push it don't push the boundaries right it's always yes. that trust that you get your work done. there's no issues it's it's all about that so um you're a mom you're a dad you have to go and do some of these things i don't want to deprive you of that because i myself do it as well so if i'm doing it I expect people to be able to do that as well. And obviously yeah. to a certain degree, push it. I mean, yeah. don't don't take advantage of it. Yeah. 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 Correct. And I think it's leading by example. It's like mm -hmm. when you say you're going to watch swimming and you'll be back in an hour, that you are back in an hour. Yeah. So you're setting the example of I trust you to go, but you also have to come back and do your work. And again, it's trust and setting the example. And also as you were speaking, June, I think it's um, just being aware of yourself being a human, like you're a human being at the end of the day, and we're working with human beings, and you're not more precious than somebody else, and you're not more important than somebody else. Yes, your job might require you to do more important things, but as a human, you're not more important than somebody else. And I think that without you having to say anything, it comes across. Yeah. I, mean, I, yeah. I respect you as a human, respect me as a human, and we'll create this trust environment. But don't, there will be consequences if you push it. And I, you will know straight away, like you said, that ongoing communication, you will know when I think, okay, swimming is not four hours. It's maybe an hour and a half and if you're running late going hey i'm sorry i'm running late i'll be i'll log in at quarter past or i'll do my extra hour after yeah. work so it's it's that give and take um yes absolutely but also like consequences we're all equal right so i don't have this i've worked with managers where there's this hierarchical thing and it just makes yes. it really awkward for me yeah. I, I don't want that. I want to be all equal. So, yes, I have my tech leads. They are my experts. They're managing you. But we're all equal. We're all together working on this together. Um, you could be a contractor. You could be a permanent. You could be an offshore um, developer or a QA person that I have in, in India. It doesn't matter. You're part of this team. 
So all our stand-ups or all our agile ceremonies are conducted in the afternoon for that exact reason, so that we don't exclude anyone from those meetings. Yeah. yeah? So it's it could be quite hard adjustment for those who are actually based in Brisbane. They literally have nothing the first four hours before till twelve o'clock when it all hits. Yeah. Let's do it. You've got you've got to meet with your guys in India. You've got to meet with your other team members, right? So let's do it that way. Um, it's about the inclusiveness. So you don't exclude yeah. anyone. You don't make preference to people. You just got to be extra fair. That's the other thing too, being fair. Yeah. Um, and always be ready to to help if that makes sense to support. There are yeah. situations where you've got to deal with a staff telling you that things are happening at home and it's not going really well and you've got to understand it and go, how can I help? And I'm really sorry to hear that, but how can we help? Or maybe when you work out what you need from me, let me know and I can step in at home, if that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, and, and, yeah but and being very available to say, um, you know, you, you're you're gonna be under the thumb with the with the with the treatments and all of that. Your kids will need you to step up to help with the cooking and all of that. You may not be able to work for X hours, or you might just need to be called into the hospital immediately to go and help. Do it. Go. Yeah. And we'll we'll sort it out later. Um, yeah. If we need to bring someone else in, or if we need to make you work in the afternoons or in the evenings, do that. But make sure that you look after your health, because now you're the, mm. you're the you're the you're the sole looking after everyone. Can you cope with that? Like, are you yes. going to be okay doing that? I'm going to trial it for one night, trial it for one week. If it's not working, come back to me. Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. me what I can do to yeah. help you. Right. It's all about that. Like you know, you don't expect to. That the thing is, you 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 have a team of people. They're all professionals. They're all adults and all professionals. So you trust that they will do the right thing by themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where possible. So if you if they're not working out or it's not working really out, then you just gotta have that real conversation and chat. Have the conversation. Yeah. And I am um, I I very, very strongly believe that when you employ somebody, automatically you say to that person, I trust you. Yeah. I give you yep. that trust until you show me I can't trust you. So Absolutely. it's not about you have to do things to earn my trust. The trust is given and it's up to you what you do with that trust environment. 100% my trust. 100% you get my trust. Mm. And then it starts going down. This is yeah. when we will have conversations. Yeah. This is where, yeah. and micromanagement is absolutely, micromanaging is not my style. Been there with other managers that, that were like this and it was not fun not fun for all yeah. it takes a lot of time it makes people second guess their roles and their jobs and it's just not a good feeling for anyone so you would never you can't micromanage when you start micromanaging that means it's a sign for you to think about what's happening when june steps why? in and starts micromanaging yes. and why yeah. why yeah. why how many hours yeah. spent that that's a sign that it's not working yeah. typically yeah. yeah something's broken Something is yeah. broken. We need to come back to the yeah. party. We need to work it out together. We need to we need to we need to reestablish that line again and work out what's happening in that space of yours mm. and, and mine mm. as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, correct. So the other thing as well, I think um, I think it's yeah, I think it's all about just being available and being accept so just being really genuinely and real. Like you've got to yeah. be that person, yeah. and then you're a mom. You've got kids. You've got things to deal with at home. Um, you don't have to always put on that very brave front. You can just say, "Today was a really terrible day, my little man." Whatever. Yeah. It's okay. Just talk about it. Yeah. Then people go there. Yeah. Oh, she's real. She's a mom. Yeah. I don't wear this every day. I wear my home clothes, right? I'm I'm a person. Like if I yes. being right, I'm a normal person like you and me. Like we're mom and dads. We take our kids out for swimming and all that. It's part of us. DNA. It's our yeah. DNA. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with that. And it's, it, it, I think you've summed that up. Um, it's interesting that this conversation went to the trust, yeah. respect, being authentic. Just those, it's, it's such basic, basic values, but huge. And I think too, sometimes they do get lost. Yeah. They get lost a lot um, within teams and within people too. So, yeah. Um, and it's when those egos step in and I'm more important and there's hierarchy. And like you said, people become unsure when they're being micromanaged. That's when it feels like the apple cart gets 
unstable and it's almost an old way of managing is if i don't see your bum on the seat you're not working yeah well that's not true it's not true so and that's where the trust no. comes in um and that was an interesting observation i had in COVID, where some of my clients were like no they have to work five days a week in the office we have to come back to the office why you've yeah. had two years of people not working in the office why what's and for me it was trust trust that people will do the right thing and if they don't then you have the conversations but not all people are are wired that way and i think that's why we got along so well june because your brain's oh. wired like mine <laughs> i love it <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's with how you want to be spoken to and how you want to be treated Correct. is how you yes. to return that favor back. So you, you've got to literally go, if I'm going to receive this really awful feedback, how do I want to hear it, All right? So mm. you state the facts. That's what's happened. This is why yeah. it happened, the way I think it happened. Can you tell me your point of view? Am I right? Am I on the right track? If, you, yeah. if I'm not on the right track, please tell me. Please, please let me know because I'm doing it a different way. So talk to me about it. And it's a discussion. It's not me telling you. It's not a dictatorship. It's not that. It's two ways. Communication. Let's chat about it. Um, okay. Now that we've acknowledged that, yes, it was a problem, how can we fix it? How can I help yeah. you? What do you think it should be done? Do you want to have a think about yeah. it over the, over, the, over the next few days? I can come back to you again. So it's, yeah. it's genuine care of you wanting them to do their best and be the best that they can. Because they represent themselves, but they also represent me. I need to have the right Absolutely. people with me on. The yes, I need yeah. to know that I've got the right people to be able to represent me. So, um, it it needs to gel and work. And once you have got that sort of trust, everything else would work. If that makes sense, it's um, yes, it does. It's on, yep. And I said, right, you want you want to be your best version for your boss just like you want to be the best version for yourself so you will give yeah. back as much as you can if suki says i need you to really do an extra hour because something's really 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 bad is happening we need this done urgently you'll do it but you know suki yeah. will say to you please take that one hour back in the next few days it's up to you how you manage it and that's how i used to tell my yeah. team we work sometimes long hours but i trust you that you will take that time off because it's your time that you're entitled to you yeah. take that time off from us and, and take yeah. time off and you know, walk off earlier. I don't care. I'm making my guys go 3 30, guys. You've had a really big week. Go. Yeah. Oh, I've got to finish this. Yeah. Finish and go. I'll come back to you in the next half an hour. Go. Yeah. So it's something you always says. That <laughs> exactly. And we're not brain surgeons. Yeah. Nobody's going to no. die. Nobody's going to die if you don't finish this piece of work right now or if you finish it tomorrow. Mm. Nobody's unless it's urgent yes but if it's not right. no one's gonna die <laughs> absolutely june that was powerful wow. very very powerful um Thank you. i love, love, love i knew love yeah and i and, and you know what when you say you love it you can actually see the passion you have for it which is infectious yeah. and that was when I thought yes. about this, I'm like, June is the perfect person to talk mm -hmm. about this because she's, you embody it. It's so, I yeah. think it's important for you. It's it's really important for you, but it's just, it's it's who you are. Um, and it comes across. I was, yeah, 100%. And I'm sitting here watching and I'm just thinking like, I want to be that leader. I want to be oh, a leader. You're like inspiring. Like, that's that's who I want to be as a leader. So thank you for your inspiration. And I'm sure our listeners will also feel that they want to be a leader like you as well. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Like that, that's very kind. But yes, thank you. It just comes naturally to me. Like I just love it. Like um I, I can't you can tell like but being at <laughs> I'm at a desk and just doing my work and not talking to people, not having my 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 guys. It's just weird. Maybe I could one day, but no, no. love that. That's right now because I need to get one straight. Yes. Hear from them. Yeah, and it got to the point where one of the VAs from another team, yes, heard about it. She says, "Can I please join?" Said, sure. So she came to my our team on that that quiz. And then when I finally finished with the team and moved on to a different team, you she's that me. She goes, oh, my God, bring up a quiz with, with this team. Love it. You've got to do it. Okay. Hopefully they enjoy it. so good. And they love it. No. Yeah. 
And it's being a bit of a it's being a bit of a change agent to go, you're not you you going, well, I see a gap here or I see a problem, let's address it, let's get the change happening. And then other people realize, like, oh, hang on, we want to change the culture, we want to change the way we do things. And sometimes you don't even realize that you have that impact by just being who you are and doing what you do, and other people will see it. Um, June. Thank you so much for your time. I know you've had a really, really busy day and you had to brave the Brisbane traffic, which in the rain is usually not fun. So um, we really appreciate your time and we'd yeah. love to have you back on. We'll There's so, so much more we can talk about. Um, but yes, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. And thank you. Um, I wish there would be more Junes in the world. Oh. <laughs> Yes, 100%. <sighs>